Good, Mr. Chairman, so I'll be, I'll be brief. Again, thank you for your time, um, all members of the committee. My name is Aaron Dorr. I'm here on behalf of the members of Georgia Gun Owners. We've been pushing this bill for a long time here, here in Georgia, and our members are fully in support of this legislation, SB 319, known as Constitutional Carry in Georgia. We've already discussed this a lot today. I'm not going to belabor a lot of the points, but this bill is really simple. We're not addressing who can buy a gun. We're not addressing um, or making it any easier for a criminal to access a firearm. We're not getting rid of or in any way changing the current shall issue system here in Georgia. And it's not going to lead to an increase in crime either. All this bill does is simply says that law abiding citizens who already can legally possess a firearm can carry that firearm with no need for additional government paperwork, restrictions, fees, or anything else. That is the, that is the, the nutshell of this bill. And anybody who says that we're going to see a spike in crime is not dealing with the reality of the 21 states, almost half the country, that has already enacted this legislation. We've heard some stats here today about certain types of crimes that have gone up. I can't speak to every example given, but the reality is that murder in every state that has enacted constitutional carry has either remained the same or gone down. In many cases, if not every case, rape also has either remained the same or gone down. So you might find one area of criminal statute that may have seen an increase that's probably not even tied to this bill in the first place, but the reality is that crime rates have stayed the same or gone down in the states that have done this. At the end of the day, for the members of Georgia gun owners, this bill is not really even about policy anymore. Criminals are going to have guns. They already do. Good guys have guns. We already do. This is about freedom, and it's about law-abiding Georgians not having to put their name in a government database, being tracked by their own government just to exercise a Second Amendment right. We've waited a long time for this bill. We'd love to see it happen this year and encourage this committee to move it through committee as soon as possible. I'm answering answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Doerr. Any questions for him from the committee? Obviously, your two minutes won't be counted for questions. Um, Senator Parent. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. I have two questions for you. Did your organization take the position in 2014 that the a bill passed then that very much broadened um, gun access in Georgia would also not lead to an increase in gun crime? I wasn't involved with Georgia guns at that time. I wasn't involved with that bill. Uh, our push has been for constitutional carry the entire time. Would you um, agree with me that we've seen a vast increase, a serious increase in gun crime and gun violence since yes, 2014 in Georgia? Yes, especially in all the blue cities where the laws are very much geared towards protecting criminals in many cases, yes. Uh, we've seen it, but wasn't the, the claim that you just made and that was made in 2014 is that all that would be eliminated due to more people having guns. Well, we, we were not involved with that bill at that time, but every study that's ever been produced has shown that more guns leads to lower crime rates. Um, I have five on my desk right now that show the opposite. And were they Bloomberg-funded studies? No, they were not. Let's, let's, let's talk one at a time. Okay, well, I'll so, move on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on Excuse hold on, me. Hold on, hold on. I apologize for interrupting. I think... You'd asked a question, I don't remember what it was, but were you, you finish answering the last question that she asked, then I'll let her ask another question. If you could you. back up, I, I've lost track. Well, let's sorry. start over. I just start over I, asking I, her I, question. I, I, mine that? is just a, a comment. I mean, I, I don't, I really take issue with the widespread manufacturing of statements that more guns lead to less crime. And that's just, I, I really take offense at that. Um, the question I have is so. Are you, would you likewise regard it as burdensome that people have to get a driver's license and take a test to, to be able to operate a vehicle? Well, the difference is there's no constitutional right given to us by our founding fathers to drive a car and how we, how we operate and travel. Our right to keep and bear arms is constitutionally guaranteed. Isn't it the case that no right is absolute? Oh, I would not, I'd not agree with that when it comes to the Second Amendment. So it's Amendment. totally fine with you and people, because you know, under the law, the courts, A, have never held that a permit license was not constitutional under, no federal court has held that, held that under the Second Amendment. On the other side of the coin, plenty of courts have routinely held that our, that our First Amendment rights, our Second Amendment rights can be curtailed in the interest of safety of others. The classic example being you're not allowed to scream bomb in a crowded theater or in a crowded airport. You, you, do you disagree with that jurisprudence? 
Well, first of all, there are Supreme Court cases that are pending right now to address the constitutionality of the permit process at the federal level, at the Supreme Court level, excuse me. So we'll see what happens with the courts in that process. But every type of infringement that you're talking about, as has been said by this committee previously, only impacts the good guys because the criminals don't care about the laws that we pass. The How criminals just don't care about the, the your gun-free zone policies or whatever it is. They're going to carry regardless. The current infringements only impact our members and other law-abiding uh, Georgians. Well, I disagree with that, but the, but the question I have is, so you, you do or don't have a problem with the limitation on the First Amendment of screaming bomb in a crowded theater? I'm here to speak about constitutional care. I can't get into the First Amendment. It's not my area of expertise. It would sound to me that, isn't it true that you don't really think that that should be struck down? And so I would posit to you that all constitutional rights have reasonable limitations in the interest of safety of others. I'm not sure if there was a question I have to answer, Mr. Chairman, or what that was. Isn't it true? <laughs> Isn't which part true? What I, ju what I just said. No, we do not agree with any limitations on our right to keep and bear arms. These are constitutionally about, guaranteed asking, freedoms. Hold on, first hold amendment. on. We can debate the second amendment. Let's at least stick with the first one, okay? Let's talk one at a time. Um, please finish whatever your answer at last question is, or I'll move on. I'm free to move okay. on. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.